Hey, this is Kyle with Liberty Me here at ISFLC 2014 in Washington, D.C. with Professor Dan D'Amico. What was the deal with that? Uh, you, your pocket square wasn't really out enough. Oh, okay. I get, no, I got you. Okay. I'm just looking out, bro. Uh, no, that sounds good. That sounds good. Well, there are a lot of exciting things. Um, Professor D'Amico is going to be doing a lecture for Liberty Me, but he's also got a very exciting uh, new thing for uh, Learn Liberty coming out. Now, you were telling me about this. This sounds great. It's almost like a, an Anthony Bourdain style, you know, get out into, get, you know, feet, get on the ground, not a bunch of, you know, just talking about vague economic stuff. You're talking about getting on the ground and talking about how economics affects culture. You know, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I, I'm really, really excited about it. Um, we had a ton of fun filming it. Um, uh, Ross Kenyon is, is sort of an IHS alum. Uh, he's in the movement. Um, he's, I guess, been bouncing around trying to develop a portfolio for himself uh, as a film director. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's been doing freelance work, and whenever he gets an idea, he pitches stuff to, uh, to learn liberty. And so he approached me with this idea of doing on the ground sort of cultural political economy of New Orleans and Mardi Gras and some of the more unique aspects of uh, New Orleans culture, which there are many. Sure. Um, and I was really excited about this because it's a type of project that I've been thinking about and wanting to do for a really long time. And the way I think of it is online education right now has tremendous opportunities. And we, we talk about every time I see you, Kyle, we have these, these chats, sure. which I ch cherish. Um, but we, we, we talk about the changing face of higher education. And one of the major factors involved with that is obviously online, yeah. online programming. But as of right now, it, it, it's, it's a direct mirror image of what you get in a regular college experience just replicated through digital space. Hmm. So it's almost an, uh, a, a lesser value good. Like if you're, if you're like me and like talking and chatting through ideas, then you lose out on that if you're uh, involved in, high, in online education. Like Google Plus and all these things are, are, are closing that gap. But it seems like there's a comparative advantage opportunity that's missed out with digital media and online education because what we could be doing is supplementing field experiences. We could be supplementing like abroad experiences because we've got the technology to, 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 to close the gap. Instead of spending thousands and thousands of dollars on one semester's worth of a broad program, you could supplement your entire college curriculum with not only a, a, a real-time class but potentially interactive experiences with faculty on the ground uh, and analyzing social processes in real time and, and, and how they occur. And so I, I would love to see more investment in that type of thing. It, it, it excited me a lot when Ross called me and said that Learn Liberty uh, and IHS were interested in moving more in that direction. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Anthony Bourdain, but I think the model that comes to mind is something like Vice videos with a classical liberal bent. Oh, okay, right? yeah. So Learn Liberty thus far has been very chalkboard, very white screen scripted, here are some basic lessons, so on and so forth. But what if the setting of the videos was more uh, a real cultural phenomenon or something that was interactive? And so um, when they, they wanted to do something in a timely fashion with Mardi Gras coming up and, and, uh, and they probably saw the success of our regional conference in New Orleans and uh, I'd done some work on New Orleans Katrina recovery with the Mercatus Center and published a little bit on that. So, I mean, they broached the topic, we're going to be in town, we're going to film videos. We just batted scripts back and forth and like I said, the last like week and a half we just uh, took the camera crew out and I'm excited because one of the, um, the, the camera field team that we did mm -hmm are domestic New Orleanians. Um, Who else would have the local knowledge? But they're also uh, libertarian-minded, oh, right? Well, so, good. I mean, several times I've done video work with people and you have to trust the editing isn't going to dilute your message or, sure. or, or, or not comprehend what you're aiming at. So it's really good to have people who, who get what's going on. Um, it, just in general, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I, Given that it's going to be probably one of the first uh, of its kind with Learn Liberty, uh, I'm excited to, to talk with you about it to hope to, to generate a little, little bit of traction on it. So be sure to look out for it, subscribe. Even if, even if you can't participate in an, in an, active, um, in an active way during, during the course, um, be sure to at least subscribe, click, etc. 
th that stuff matters for coordinating resources in the future for, for getting donors and, and stuff like that. Definitely. Uh, so the first image that was released was uh, of you making some gumbo. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I remember in the New Orleans uh, Students for Liberty Conference, you talked a little bit about gumbo as the kind of uh, the kind of mixing of, of cultures that happens in an area and that kind of spontaneous order that arises. You know, yeah. can you talk a bit? Of, that's a great analogy. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's a synonym. I yep. mean, uh, New Orleanians don't really respond very well when I try to explain to them the detailed, finer points of what spontaneous order is. But they get gumbo, yeah. right? And uh, and spontaneous order is gumbo. So when you walk out in the world and you sort of see interaction amongst individual parts that contribute to something more complex and greater than the sum of its parts, and that proves a sense of evolution and, and adaptability uh, that you can remove one without eliminating its essence, uh, that, that, that's really what spontaneous order is. The division of labor is this sort of robust network of individuals. No one individual makes or breaks uh, the division of labor. It, it, it's actually incredibly uh, adaptable, it, organic, but it also is, is very robust to shock, to crisis to uh, solving new problems, to, to, to evolving and improving over time. And, and gumbo, the, the history, the narrative, the culture, the appreciation, all, all of that, New Orleanians, for example, get when you talk about gumbo. They're like, yeah, this is gumbo. So it was a, it was a great opportunity. The way I would explain it when we were doing footage, I mean, you, you're trying to interview people. They're not necessarily libertarians. They're not really like aware of what Learn Liberty is and stuff like that. But I mean, I think there's a lot of really unique things that go on in our city in New Orleans that um, other cities don't really have. And in large part because we have a large degree of liberalism in certain margins. We're relaxed when it comes to consumption and alcohol and uh, like the public usage of space uh, for the sake of debauchery. Um, and, and we foster that culture well compared to other places. Um, so what we, what we wanted to do is just take these basic things that you find and take for granted every day in the city of New Orleans and use them as a way to in, excite college students, excite motivated uh, watchers, viewers, uh, students, etc., cetera, to, to learn some, some social science, some economics, some political science, some, uh, some sociology. Uh, in, in, in a context that's more interesting than a textbook presentation. Sure. You know? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Sure. So you start with uh, food, but I'm sure that it makes perfect sense that you might follow up with jazz, similar to gumbo, or you know, exactly. a, lot, a lot of the things native exactly. to uh, New Orleans. You know, where do you go from there? You know, you have jazz, maybe uh, gambling. I don't know. Uh, I mean, well, what? We, we we touch on a uh, on a number of uh, the the sort of urban planning issues that are at, at play in New Orleans, everything from noise ordinances to alcohol regulation to, to gambling and, and tourist industry. We touch on the trade history of the Port of New Orleans. We touch on um, how Mardi Gras and, and parade festivals may actually be thought of in terms of a mechanism for uh, mitigating political corruption. Um, we talk about uh, food and the and, like food is just a great opportunity. I, I, I I've Always. recently developed like just a really appreciation for for nutrition and, and cooking and stuff like that. But food is is both is, it's a lesson in capital theory, uh, entrepreneurship and creative like innovative discovery, and obviously cultural economics and, and the sort of evolutionary and spontaneous order aspect. So. Uh, gumbo was the obvious go-to. Um, we talk a little bit about king cake, which is an interesting thing in the city of New Orleans. Uh, social capital is a, is a common theme through all of our videos. I don't um, want to give it away, but, uh, but king cake is really interesting and kind of odd. Like, without giving it away, like what, what a little bit do you go into with the king cake? Well, uh, I mean, it, when I first moved to New Orleans, I, I, I got attracted to king cake because it reminded me of my family in New Jersey. Um, Italians are really close-knit groups. There's, there are faux pas that you can commit in, in, in the D'Amico family, for example. Like, if you bring the wrong type of cannoli to Christmas, like, you're never getting invited again. <laughs> um, if you have a new house and you invite someone over, but not under the auspices, for like coffee and cake, right? Like, like 
there, there, there's a, a norm that you have to comply with. And King Cake is like that. And uh, for New Orleanians, that there's a, a reciprocity that's involved. If you get the baby in your piece of King Cake, it's your responsibility to bring the next cake to the next party. Sure, sure. And I, I learned about this the hard way uh, when I first started teaching at, at Loyola. I, like, I was like excited, I was, I was busy, I was, I was hungry, and I grabbed the piece and like got the baby. And then all the faculty secretaries like laughed at me, ah, you've got to bring it. And here I wanted to like make my own and bring it in. And so like a week went by and they were like, hey, where's the king cake? And I was like, oh, well, I was, I've been looking up recipes. I wanted to make, they're like, no, 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 no. You just go buy one and you bring it in. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, it was big out, in-group, out-group, like, like you would be on the, the shit list, so to speak. Sure, you didn't sure. comply. <laughs> that's, that's great. Well, I mean, you know, it's a uh, no coercion needed there. I mean, I guess it is in some way, but you know, it's just uh, social norms. You oh. know, you you got the baby. It's time to get the king cake. Although getting the baby is kind of an odd situation. It's weird to think about where that tradition well, came from. There's but. a history, and we'll, we'll we discuss that in the video. Good, so, good. I mean, okay, we, we got to save something. Oh, for, oh of for course. Later. Fantastic. Consider that a teaser. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But you will find out where the baby comes <laughs> from. I don't even know if it feels like Maury or something. I it's don't know. very awkward. But, <laughs> you are not the father. <laughs> well, hey, thanks so much, Dan. It's been fantastic as always. <laughs>